We've uh, switched chairs. Uh, welcome back, uh, I guess, kind of eight minutes after the hour of three o'clock. What are you pointing to? Oh, you didn't switch chairs. Well, yeah, we did switch chairs. Not literally. Well, that one's broken again. You see? I, I don't know who does it. Somebody sneaks in here in the middle of the night and breaks the chairs. It's beyond me. Probably the same crowd that leaves, you know, money behind. Uh, anyway, where were we? I, I, I don't know really what to do. It's a, uh, it's a Thursday. And uh, it's the 9th of March, 1989. You see, Webb loves it when I'm mean to people on the phone. He just absolutely, positively gets off on it to, to no end. Oh, please, Bobby, please come in and be mean to the callers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He really gets off on it. So I've got, you know, an hour of meanness under my belt. We'll make it primarily an afternoon that uh, will be open, okay? Let me give you the telephone numbers. 461-9352, 461-WFLA, 990-9352, 990-WFLA. That's number in Hillsborough. The first number, of course, was Pinellas, 461-9352. Pinellas, 990-9352, Hillsborough. What the hey, let's take some calls. Uh, Dunedin, hi, Dun, you're on there at 970 WFLA. Uh, yes, Bob. Uh, I'd like, um, on your prompting yesterday, I called up the other station, Q105, uh-huh. to talk to Mason Dixon. Mm-hmm. And I had a nice little conversation with him. Would you like to hear what he had to say? Sure. All right. Now, uh, I called him up, and I waited about 12 minutes after the uh, lady who screened the calls, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, took my call. And finally, he came, and he talked to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said some things that I think, well, they're kind of distressing, as is he referred to the strikers. He didn't call them strikers. He called Indeed, them. it was true. They would have all been gone anyway. But there's one little thing that, you know, guys like Mason kind of forget about, you know, when they talk about all those other poor people that lost their jobs, is that the machinists were being put into a situation where it would have literally forced many of them, if indeed not most of them, into personal bankruptcy with Lorenzo's forcing on them at least a 20% immediate pay cut. Very, very few people, probably even Mason himself, could take a 20% pay cut and not be in deep, deep trouble. Very few people have 20% of their income as discretionary income. Almost everybody is, you know, mortgaged to the hilt, if you will. But Mason didn't bother to think about that. Mason doesn't think about anything except his own little self. The hell with him. Who needs him? Let him sit there and talk to Tiffany. Well, um, he also thought uh, that if he ever got a pay cut, uh, he would just quit. All right, Bob? Mm-hmm. So thanks for listening to me, okay? Take care. All right, bye. Off we go to, uh, whoops, uh, that's my fault. Let me do that, and then that, and then that. Uh, line six, I inadvertently answered. Okay, Gino on West Shore. Hi, Gino, you're on the air. Brother Bob. Uh, hey, Gene. Hey, Gomez and Gomez, Ron and Ron. Uh, Cleveland Mason, step aside. It's Jeff and Jeff, sir. Jeff and Jeff. Jeff and Jeff, yes. Quaylen Bush. Hey, you guys got a great rapport. I, I think uh, they're missing a, a beat there. It was just by luck you got teamed up today. But uh, Ted and Bob, I like it. I like that bitter better. You each got your own uh, strengths uh, to build on. And, yeah, but you, you see, Webb just likes it when I'm really mean. That, that's what that's what he really enjoys. Well, him. he's into or S&M, you know. He probably is. Yeah, he's a kinky guy. That I mean, he just sits here and squeals and delight uh, when I'm, <laughs> whenever I'm mean to somebody on the phone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, but it sounded good from this end. I'll tell you what. It, uh, it had a nice ring to it. Uh, you guys kind of balance each other off. Hey, I'm sure I couldn't make it last night. I really am. I had to work late, and uh, it, uh, did, was, did a few people show up? Or? About 250 to 300. Well, hey, in that neighborhood. What the hey? You know, what do you figure on this bankruptcy thing? I'll tell you that. I think he he wanted that to start with, didn't he? It's, it's not bankruptcy. We're he, talking about reorganization here. There's well, a big difference between Chapter 11 and Chapter 7, and he's into Chapter 11, which is reorganization at this point. Uh, if I understand the law correctly, and that goes down to the bankruptcy referee or judge, as the case may be, and the principal creditors as to whether or not they are willing to go along with a reorganization plan that would allow Eastern to remain in business. Well, there's some word out there that he wanted to do this all along because with the uh, uh, Chapter 11, he can really force the union donuts. Ah, okay, yeah. And then I commented and it should, on... you know, come up a few minutes earlier before I picked out on other stuff. And then I commented on that uh, thing you call a ring. Well, it is a ring. It looks more like a basketball hoop. 
I beg your pardon, sir. This is this this, this, this is a gift from my wife that you're so, talking about. It looks like about. something. Yeah, it looks like this something on the Flintstones present. would be wearing. The I think it's huge, present, sir. You could you could buy. Could you, couldn't you buy the airplane airline with that? Not quite. It's it's not not that not that expensive. You know, I, I did what what some of the other callers said. You know, after a while, I just went up and started talking to some of these guys. And you know, I mean, it's a it, why? Oh, I don't understand why people don't have any kind of. Uh, Understanding of what the, I mean, you know, they've been middle on middle class, middle aged guys. That's what we're talking about here. You know, they've been on a two year wage freeze, and they even said, you know, we'll go two more years on a wage freeze. Just don't cut our wages anymore. And you know, the, why? Why? The, you know, hey, I can't take a twenty percent. I could not. I could not tolerate a twenty percent wage decrease. It would hurt real, real bad. Oh well, I just hope uh, things work out for them, for the better anyway. Well. A lot of people do. A lot of people would like to see them rot in the gutter. Hey, such is life. And Mason drives a Porsche. Really? Yeah. You know, Wouldn't surprise me at all. Exactly. Him and his hairdo. All right, Bob. Keep up the good work. And uh, uh, lovely muffin. Take care. Bye-bye. 9909352. What the hell is keep up the good work? Replacing. How are you doing? 9909352 in Hillsboro. 4619352 in Pinellas. An open afternoon. St. Petersburg. Hi there, St. Peter. You're on the air. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Fine, thanks. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Bob, uh... I've got a friend that travels quite frequently in the Miami area, and I understand you've been up in our Tampa Bay market for some three years, you say. Right, three and a half. Yeah, okay. He travels down there frequently, and he says um, some local station down there trashes you quite frequently. Yeah, Neil Rogers on IUD. I'm not sure who it is. You didn't mention the Neil station. Rogers on IUD, I know. Okay. Yeah, I'm aware um, of it. He says, like, oftentimes somebody will call and say, you know, if it is Neil or whoever, I'll say hypothetically Neil. They'll say, Neil, I'm traveling up to the Tampa Bay area and blah, blah, blah. And they send, you know, quite some, they want to send with these travelers some crude messages to you <laughs> and, and absolutely trash you over the air. And what I'm curious about, mm -hmm. um, Bob, is if your actions here in the Tampa Bay market in relation to or correlation to your trashing other local talents, are we going to have a repeat here, say, in, in three years or... Or should you ever leave our market here? Is that what's going to happen here? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, in other words, Bob, when you leave here, you're stirring up a lot of what I feel is muck, say, with Q Jive and Ron, or, or Jeff and Jeff and all that uh -huh. jazz. I think it's for the great of the show and all that jazz. Don't misunderstand me. But um, are these going to are these guys going to trash you? How the hell would I know? Why don't you ask them? Well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, Bob, because you obviously had such an impression in the Miami area. I worked weekends there, sir. Uh, regardless, Bob, apparently you had such an impact in the area, negative, positive, otherwise, that some three and a half years after your departure, they still find it necessary if you're really, if you're really, if you're really, if you're really, if you're really interested, sir, in an answer, I can give you an answer. And that is. Uh, or, you know, if you're just trying to be a smart ass, then I'll just move on no, to somebody no, I'm else. I'm asking you a, a question from the heart, Very Bob, simple, because... sir. Neil Rogers is perhaps the most talented talk show on the face of the earth. He is a man whose, whose intellect, whose ability, whose talents I stand in utter awe of. I've heard you say that before. However, Neil Rogers is also a basket case, sir, who, is, who does not have a friend in the world. Okay. For all practical purposes, he is a slob, a physical slob. I mean, I, we're not talking about just being overweight. We're talking about a guy who, who's covered in the food that he's been eating that day. Right. Who just simply cannot deal with anyone else's success. Okay. Uh, that's, that's literally what it comes down to. Neil, I thought for a while, was a friend of mine. I will always be grateful to him. I owe literally everything I have and in this I've business to Neil Rogers. I've, I've heard you attribute a lot of your knowledge or knowledge gained in the industry to this individual, if this is who is actually doing the on-air trashing, I don't know. This Neil is... Rogers and I have not seen each other in over three years. I've never heard his new show. Mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. doubt very much that Neil has ever heard my show in this market. I doubt it very, very much. Okay. And well, he's just, you know, he's just a bizarre little man uh, who okay. apparently feels take... threatened by me, which for which I can't begin to imagine why. All that taken into consideration, Bob, threatened or otherwise, why do you think Neil would feel... Uh, so threatened to you that he would have his callers, you know, want sir, to bring, I, I just, want I just to bring answered such your horrible... question. I don't know, sir. Why the hell did you call him? Huh? Because you're the one that brought up the thing with Mason again. Here it is that you are in a market sir. area that you find it necessary, Bob, sir. to trash all sir. of the other fellow... Uh, sir. All, all the other people in this market, sir. Area, you feel it necessary to trash sir. upon them. I'm sir. just asking if there's a correlation. Sir. sir, I didn't bring up Mason's name. A caller did. 
You're the one that you chose to spoke about it. You could have easily uh, diverted Sir. the conversation. Sir, I happen to personally think, and it has nothing whatsoever to do with Mason Dixon's abilities, mm -hmm. I happen to think it is a disgusting, despicable position on his part when he obviously doesn't know, A, what in the hell he's talking about, I and B, that. pretends to be the working man's buddy for, for this jerk. I can understand this that. Jerk, sir. I can understand sir, I was that. in the middle of a conversation here and in the middle of a sentence. If you would like to continue, no, you're sir. going to respect that. Okay. Not another peep out of you. Continue, then. Winter's here. So how do you cope? He's got a much better run airline. Uh, I, I, know, I, know, I know, sir. Here you are, a jerk, sitting at home probably with holes in your underwear. Taking, uh, you know, well, taking least, great pride in Frank holes Lorenzo. holes in my underwear, not holes in my brain like you. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, oh, and he hangs up, too. Obviously, I hit a, I hit a nerve there with the holes in the underwear. Here's a jerk sitting home with holes in his underwear. Applauding Frank Lorenzo. Tens of thousands of people have been put out of work by this jerk. Unbelievable. Probably also people who make underwear. Kenneth City. Kenneth, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. You're boring, Bob. Oh, okay, sir. <laughs> Seven minutes, he sat on the phone to tell us that we're boring. <laughs> Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Afternoon, sir. Yeah. Listen, I wanted to say a couple things about the folks that were laid off that are non-union. Okay. I saw an incredible thing the other night. That was when the pilots were having a rally, a strike rally, and... Uh, it's louder than everybody else on the damn radio station. It takes a big no, man so I'm to call better than everybody else on the radio, radio station. Damn radio. Better than everybody, sir. That's why I'm... You got that? Louder. No, sir, I didn't hear you. You were too stupid. You were talking while I was talking. And unfortunately, neither I nor anybody else heard you. Too bad. Better luck next time. Zephyr Hills, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Hey, my girlfriend and I were very honored to meet you last night. Well, thank you. Yeah. Listen, she was also tickled to uh, notice that you were wearing a black face Madonna watch because she got me one this like it for Christmas. She was oh. all happy. <laughs> okay. Nice watch, nice watch. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Listen, um... Obviously, a, a young lady with great taste. Oh, absolutely. I can't uh, complain, that's for sure. Listen, why haven't you sent me my Mad Dog tickets yet? Uh, when did you write in? About the 21st, I think. 21st? Uh, you probably wrote in after we said don't write in anymore. Oh, no, really? Oh, uh, yeah, but you should be getting them in a day or two anyhow. Oh, oh you think you'll send me? You'll, you mean you, you send on, me some? Uh, it depends on what you asked for. Uh, no, I just asked for tickets, that's it. Tickets any day? Um, yeah, any time. I didn't, I didn't ask for a specific date, is that... A problem? No, it's no problem at all, actually. That's the best way to do it right now. But you should be getting them, uh, if not like tomorrow, the day after, because they did go out this weekend. What, okay. what I had done is I had said at one point, I said, you know, whoa, I'm up, up into April at this point. Don't send me any more requests. Wait until I, I say send them. But people kept sending requests anyway. To tell you the truth, I just piled them up in my briefcase, and Mary took care of them this week. <laughs> Well, thank God for Mary, that's for sure. Listen, I, I overheard some of the picketers last night commenting that they're marked, you know, they're marked people, like in the black book of everybody else's, like all the other airlines. Sure. Why? How come? I mean, I'm a little confused about that. Mm. I mean, I know because they're bound with the union, but if the airline goes down the drain, why can't they, if they're reputable, like pilots and everybody, why can't they get another job at another airline? Because they're troublemakers in the, in the eyes of management. These, these are people that, you know, these are people that said, hey, wait a second, I don't want my wages cut. That, that's not right. You know, they kind of spoke up for their rights, and the, uh, and the feeling is that the management at other airlines will say, well, gee whiz, you know, people that want their rights. Oh, whoa, we don't need them working for us. Wow, man, what a bum rap that yeah, it is. It's a real bum rap, isn't it? I can't believe it. Well, like I said, I was very glad to see you last night, Bob. Privilege was mine. Hey, no, no, no. It was all mine, really. No, 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 no. It was mine. I insist. It was mine. I insist. It was mine. <laughs> Get off my phone. It was my pleasure. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. One line open. It's in Hillsboro, 990-9352. St. Petersburg. Hi there, St. You're on the air. Uh, yes. Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, something a little more serious. What about this uh, Cat Stevens thing going on? What about it? Uh, well, they're all burning their uh, burning his records and stuff. I, I don't understand it. Well, they paid for them. I guess that's their right. Uh, I'm surprised Mason didn't start one of these burn his records campaigns. It sounds like something he'd do. Well, I wouldn't know what he would do, sir. No uh, well, he's got some good music. Uh, uh, Cat Stevens, uh, do you enjoy his music? Yes, I do, sir. Uh, well, I don't understand. Uh, did he actually uh, come out and say that uh, uh, he wants to kill Rushkey, or did he just agree with the Ayatollah? I don't understand that. A little of each, sir. 
because uh, 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 I think uh, what the people are doing over here is uh, just as bad as uh, 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 what uh, the uh, Ayatollah did. Uh, How's that, sir? Well, they're, they're uh, burning his records and putting a ban because uh, he well, spoke sir, out and uh, spoke I, I his mind. I think there's a slight difference between burning someone's records and trying to have someone killed. Uh, that, that's the word, though, trying. That guy's not going to die. It's all a publicity stunt. Uh, I wouldn't know, sir. I you, doubt you very know. much that he really talked the Ayatollah into cooperating to help sell his book. And the other thing that's going on, this Madonna banning. What's uh, what's this? Uh, Pepsi spent all that money, and now they're not even going to uh, play her... Uh, they're not going to play her music with that's their ads That's what I read, sir. That's what I read, yeah. Well, well what's, this, what's going on with... Uh, what, what are there a bunch of old people uh, uh, making laws now? They, they, they put down a great man that... Uh, uh, defense secretary, uh, they put put him down because he drank. And now they're uh, putting down Madonna and Cat Stevens. This this world's going to hell in a hell. Yes, sir, it certainly is. St. Petersburg, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, I heard one of your callers saying that uh, Continental Airline was such a good airline. Well, I flew 70,000 miles last year. And it come to a point that it was not not safe to fly because whoa, 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 sir. First of all, I have no idea whether or not you've ever been on a Continental Airlines plane. And secondly, I have no idea as to whether or not you're even be remotely qualified to talk about whether or not something is safe. Well, you, you, don't, you don't come hey, on. Hey, let me put it this way. I was sir, sitting in a... In a sir! Yeah. You don't come on my show and make unsubstantiated charges uh, by Treasure Island. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bob. Hi. Um, I just want to ask you a question about what you do. What do I do? What, what do you mean, what, what, what do I do? For a living. Just for a living. Probably earn about ten times more than you do having fun talking to jerks like you. It's real easy, isn't it? Sure is for me. It's a racket for anybody. No, it's not a racket for anybody, sir. Obviously, if you've listened to talk radio, you appreciate very few people can do what I do. I've worked it. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Real funny, huh? <laughs> it's a laugh. I'm burning right, off five minutes, man, and there's nothing to be said. And then when mm. and in in the next call will be just as dumb and stupid as me. Mm, no, sir, I doubt that very much. Oh, you yeah. seem to have an extra talent for that. Tampa, you're on the air at nine seventy WFLA. Yes, sir, Mr. Lester. Yes, sir. Uh, for your call about you being an asshole. Uh huh. <laughs> he is totally off the wall. Oh, really? I hope that. you don't take that wrong. But I, I when I first listened to you. Mm. I said, yeah, you are, mm -hmm. but you're not. And uh, in the in the last month, I, I think you're off the wall. Damn right, you. But you make some good, dead young. You just keep people going, and I appreciate you. And I think you do a good job. And since listening to you, you just hey, like you say against me, mm hmm, and everything else. Hey. Uh, People just don't understand what you're trying to get across. Uh, thank you very much. Listen. Thank you, sir. Take care. Tappy, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yeah, Bob? Yeah. Uh, I'm one of these Eastern uh, Unionists, as it's uh, Mason Dickless calls us. Uh-huh. And all I'd like to tell on the air is that I'd like for that man to go work for Frank Lorenzo like the hundreds of that have worked for him for the last two years. And I'd like to see if he would last. Ten years. That's the only thing I've got to say, but that man has opened his mouth quite a bit against us, and he's speaking one-sided, and he doesn't know the whole story. If he went down and talked to some of these people that got laid off this past week, they are on our side because they know what we're doing. And they finally figured that out this past week. You well, had a, sir, in a couple of days, Mason will pick up on that because somebody will read the paper for him and let him know. Well, I was down there last night, and I shook your hand, and I'll tell you, it was a pleasure, and I'm proud to know you, and you're doing one hell of a job for us. You're kind, and I thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. Off it is now again to Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm just sitting there listening to people calling in, and uh, some of them condemning the... Uh, so-called unionist. Uh huh. Not long ago, I was a Greyhound bus driver right in Florida, and uh, I had an occasion, an opportunity to walk the picket line, and I know how it feels. <clears throat> and I was fortunate enough when I made the decision to quit. I was only 31 years old. I could do that. To say to people that uh, if they don't like the job, just leave. It's pretty tough for a 51-year-old guy, 52-year-old guy to do that. It, no, it's real. Skills. It's real easy, sir, to come on a talk radio show where you're anonymous, nobody knows who the hell you are, and then pop your mouth off, especially when you're sitting home unemployed. 
That's absolutely right. And uh, I'm, I just transferred from Tem uh, or Denver to here, so I'm a little familiar with the continental uh, continental employees' lives. Uh, the continental employees and uh, Greyhound bus drivers walked the picket lines. Well, you uh, always when I knew I had, had licked it when I didn't want a cigarette first thing in the morning. Well, you see, you have a normal, at least from my understanding of it, you have a normal nicotine craving. It's easier. It was easier for me. Mine went away in like a day. Yeah. But yours uh, is normal, three, four days. It's not that bad. No, it wasn't that bad. No, well, it's like Dr. Sobel says, like, the pain ain't that bad. Are, are you still, you know, are you eating candy or chewing yeah, gum? Yeah, every, every couple of hours I, I want a piece of, I take a piece of candy when I'm A week I'm or two, away. that'll go away, too. Good. Oh, uh, because I used to go into the, uh, they, they actually used to laugh at me. I would go into the 7-Eleven <laughs> and buy, like, three or four dollars worth of Tic Tacs at well, a no, time. Well, no, that's what I've been, I've been eating. I've been buying those big bags of hard candies. I go in and I buy, you know, a pound and a half, and they're gone in three days. And uh, I, I think I probably did that, let's see, uh, three or four dollars worth of Tic Tacs would last me about three days. <laughs> I did it for maybe two weeks. And uh, I haven't, haven't touched a Tic Tac. I'm now trying to get a client on uh, who uh, I can endorse for, you know, breaking over your Tic Tac addiction. <laughs> but we just go. can't find one. Uh, the uh, Quit Tic Tacs for Life program. Yeah, Quit. Well, I'm really glad it worked for well, you. Well, and I'm I really happy. I appreciate glad. it. And thank you. Well, I appreciate Not it. Not to I'm... make a big commercial out of it, but... Well, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to give the phone numbers now so I don't do the commercial later All again, right. you know. But, well, uh, hey, I'm really so glad to hear the word for well, you. Well, and I feel great. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Take thank you. Easy. You too. Bye-bye. 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 461-9352 in Pinellas. By the way, yes, you know, what the heck? If you want to get in touch with Dr. Sobel, if you want to quit for life, too, 787 5530 Five five three zero. Quit for life. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Clearwater. Hi, Clear. You're on the air at nine seventy WFLA. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. I want to whoop you up the whooper. I'll bet you do. Yeah, I sure do. Probably been thinking about that for three and a half years, haven't you? But then you'd probably whoop anybody up the whooper. Off we go to Bradenton. Bradenton, you're on there at 970 WFLA. Hi. I enjoyed you two times today. Great. I have a, a, a conundrum for you. What is the difference between a eunuch and an Eskimo? I wouldn't have a Vegas. One is a rigid midget with a frigid digit, and the other is a frigid midget with a rigid digit. Son of a gun. Isn't that astonishing? Uh, Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bob. Hi. Um, I just wanted to give you a call today, and uh, I had the pleasure of meeting you last night. And um, I went down there in the support of the uh, strikers. And um, the main thing I wanted to bring up on that level was you don't realize, you know, just what's going on until you go down there and actually speak to a few of these. Formerly loyal producer has been on the intercom with me saying, I don't know if I can take this four and a half hours of Lasseter, you know, whoa. So, please, there are two lines available in Hillsboro. If, if you'd like to crank Mike, 990-9352-990-WFLA. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970-WFLA. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. How you doing? Great. This is the first, this is the first time that I called, and um, I got turned on to you about maybe a month and a half ago, and I haven't turned turned you off since, man. I think you're doing a hell of a job. Thank you much. All right. Appreciate see ya. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> Uh, Val Rico, uh, hi there, Val. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yes, good afternoon. Hi, afternoon, sir. And uh, I've uh, sort of been tuning in and listening to uh, what's been uh, discussed about uh, the union problems with the Eastern. And I was involved in a strike here in 81. And uh, I think what a lot of your listeners fail to realize is what has happened to uh, organized labor in the last nine years or through the Reagan and... Well, I just want to say that, uh, you know, that, that, that other station, well, I, I, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, this, this, this Debbie, Debbie Gibson has been trying to get on my show all afternoon, and uh, she was on this other radio station, uh, you know, the, these losers in the morning. And uh, so we're not going to have Debbie Gibbons, uh, Gibson on, on our show. 
Uh, you're, you're not going to have Debbie Gibson no, on? No, I'm not going to put her on. I mean, All this, right, this, this, terrific. This, this you know, you're fantastic. Bimbo, man. Unbelievable. You're fantastic. I wouldn't put her on either. I'm, I'm just I'm so impressed it. by, you know, I, I was, by your I was decision, to put her on. moral decision you've made. Well, that, that, that's really what it is. I was going to put her on, and then I sat back and I said, hey, wait a second. This, this, this little chick's just a bimbo. She's just trying to sell records and stuff. Unreal. Uh, I'm, you, you know, so, let, so let, her, let, her go on with, let her go on with that other guy who's losing his hair. I am proud to work with you. I am proud to work with you. glasses. Well, thank wow. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Twelve and a half minutes after the hour of four o'clock. Uh, <clears throat> uh, where was I? Yes, uh, twelve and a half minutes after the hour of four o'clock. Hour number two. Just kind of chatting with our friends and neighbors here in the Tampa Bay market. Two lines available, both in Hillsborough County. People are really weird this afternoon. 990-9352. 990-WFLA. You may, this may be one of those shows you know, where you want to call people and tell them that, you know, Alas, there's really got some losers on. Okay, let's go back to the telephones. Uh, St. Petersburg. Hi, St. You're on the air at 970. You doing, Bob? Uh, just great. Great. great, um, great. I was out there last night uh, talking to you. I'm the guy that works for that financial institution. Ah, yes. How yes, you doing? I was thinking about you today. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, this is the first time I ever called, and I'm nervous. I came over there last night to talk to a lot of people to see what unions are about. I work for a financial institution that is non-unionized. I'm a young guy, just got out of college, making less than 20 who are getting in the business community. And I want to thank you again. You know, you didn't have to be there if you didn't want it. You didn't get paid for it, I'm sure. And I want to thank you and Mary. Your wife was there by your side last night. And I want to thank you very much for being there. And that's pretty much all I have to say. You're kind. I'm far happier that you were there. Thank you, sir. Take care. Bye. Two lines open, one in each county, 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 461-9352 in Pinellas. This time, it's clear, water high, clear, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. Some guy called earlier, and uh, he said he liked to jam you, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He obviously had one of, it sounded like he had one of those uh, things you put to your throat, you know, to talk into, like... People that have their vocal cords taken out or something like that. Uh huh. Well, that's probably why he's like that, mm-hmm. you know, because of the mouth like that. I mean, don't, if you're out there listening, pal, don't call up WFLA and make remarks like that on the radio. I mean, you must, you know, really need to see a psychiatrist or something because Bob talks a little bit funny, maybe. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I just wanted to get that off my chest because oh, I've worked great. in radio, and uh, I know how these people. There's somebody be. sitting on your chest right now. Uh, off we go to Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. I thought of a middle name for you. It's going to be called Bob Backbone Laughter because you are the backbone boy, and I'm proud of you. You were there last night. You stood up for us, the working men and women of this country. And you give me goosebumps. You're one big, handsome, lovable guy. I'd like to just jump on you and just kiss you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're giving me vapors here. <laughs> so I'm proud of you, and I just wanted to call, and it's an honor to speak to you. I, I'm really sorry I missed being there last night with you. So thanks, Bob. We love you here in Tampa, and that other guy can go yeah. blow a hole somewhere. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, baby. Bye-bye. One line open. It's in, uh, where is it? My goodness, it's in Hillsboro. 990-9352. 990-WFLA. Holy cow, if it is. And listen for details on how you can win tickets to the Renaissance Festival. Right, sure Only from News Radio 970. WFLA. Oh, back we are. Twenty four just practicing. Twenty four minutes after the hour of four o'clock. Would you consider joining me for dinner tonight? No, I am not going to buy. I would if I could, but I can't. But would you consider joining me for dinner tonight at Cobb's Cove? We will be out there. We don't get to Cobb's Cove nearly enough for dinner. But nonetheless we will be out there tonight. Would you consider it? I'll be out there about seven fifteen, seven thirty. I'll be you know, hanging around a bar for a while and then having dinner and then back out to the piano bar. With a handful of friends, we can talk, whatever you'd like to do. Cobb's Cove, you name it. Chicken specialties, pasta specialties. I'm particularly fond of the seafood, the Gulf shrimp, the shrimp scampi, the scallops, salmon, king crab, lobster, uh, and the Italian gentleman. Fresh grouper, grouper marsala, grouper Oscar, blackened grouper. On 
not even finished with a lift yet. Chateaubriand for two. Mm. Rack of lamb for two. On and on and on. So would you join us for dinner tonight at, at Cobb's Cove? I'm sure that there's got to be somebody that you'd like to bring along. Somebody that is deserving of a fine, fine meal. Somebody that's deserving of a thank you or an extra special I love you. Cobb's Cove, 13155 Gulf Boulevard in Madeira Beach. 13155 Gulf Boulevard. Their telephone number, 393-3448. 393-3448. There'll be a whole slew of us out there from WFLA tonight. Please, come on out and have dinner with us. You will not regret it, I promise you. Tampa, you're on air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bob. Hey. Sometimes I agree, sometimes I disagree, but I like your program either way. Thank you. Uh, I do have to agree that probably the other unions really don't give a damn much about what's happening there. Uh, I've never seen... Uh, well, not as much as they should, that's for sure. There were, you know, members from the letter carriers out there last night. There were a lot of guys that stopped by from um, uh, General Fenortner. I i can't think of the name of their union. You know, there, there was some union representation, but you would think in an area that had so many retired union people. You'd mm-hmm. think, wouldn't you? Oh, you would think so. I'll tell you what, if I could be king for a day, and and this is not going to be in agreement with most people's thinking, uh, I'd make it 100% commission or piecework, either one which fits the job. That way, when when someone works and does something, they are compensated directly. Now, a small base may be with the bonus being a commission or piecework or something well, no, tied no, into of, that. No, that sounds really great on the surface, but there are an awful lot of jobs and probably the majority of jobs in this country that depend upon other people or that depend upon, you know, sitting there waiting for, for somebody to walk through the door. Well, you see, that then what you do is you tie it directly to gross sales. In other words one-tenth of one percent of gross sales to be distributed among the office employees. One-tenth of one percent. But again, 1%. that's not fair because that's, that's dependent upon the salespeople. No, no, no. Or I'm not, dependent, I'm dependent not upon saying. the owner going out and advertising and soliciting business well, and so forth and so on. No, you see, that gross sales. In other words, if what whatever support uh, uh, I'm that sorry, you're giving... I'm sorry, the receptionist doesn't have any control over gross sales. Oh, yes, she does. She would be at the mercy of oh, the sales department. Oh, yes, she does. She can be nice on the phone when she talks to people, or she can be hateful to them. And as a matter of fact, the receptionist is very important as far as sales is concerned. You're not thinking clearly. I mean, you know, what you're saying sounds great on the surface, but you haven't totally thought it through. Yes, I have, Bob. The thing of it is, is that when a receptionist sounds hateful, she can turn off someone who might have bought three or four or whatever it is they're selling. Yes, but the receptionist only gets a chance to sound hateful if other people have done their job in getting people to call in. Yeah, but the deal is, is that she can contribute. You see, she's entitled to one-tenth of one percent. I'm wasting my time. That's a great idea, caller. I really think that's neat. Well, yeah. Well, but, hey, I've I got three jobs. I got two that are 100% commission, and I got one that's that's a straight salary. And there's more bickering that goes on in the straight salary than the one on commission. Well, well how, about the, how do we pay Michael Serio, sir? Because, you see, sometimes he, he works my show, and I get a lot of calls. And sometimes maybe there's somebody else in here who doesn't get a lot of calls. And so if you're going to pay Michael by the call then that isn't really very fair to him if he's working with an incompetent talk show host, is it? Well, no, but you don't have to pay him by the call. How much? Oh, I thought, well, how wait, much, wait a second, sir. How much in, wait how a, much in, wait how a much, second, sir. I, I thought you wanted to pay him, you know, by piecework. Well, I said by piecework or bonus or commission, whichever is appropriate to so what's appropriate the for situation. That, what's appropriate to his job, sir? Well, what would be appropriate would be the amount of gross sales that you guys sell in advertising. Oh, so even, so even worse, now Michael's not only at the mercy of the sales department, who may or may not be incompetent, but he's also, again, at the mercy of the talk show host, who may or may not be incompetent, and at the mercy of the management of the station, who may or may not actively solicit sales. The thing of it is, is he, sir, he, you he just is haven't hey, well, about he's it. at their mercy right now, Bob. No, he's not, sir. He gets an yes. hourly wage. Yes, he is. He can be kicked out at any time. He gets an hourly wage as long as the doors are open, sir. He gets paid. It may not be as much as he's worth, but that's beside the point. He needs to get paid. Those people that are with that union out there now don't have a job because the company went bankrupt for one reason no, or another. Sir, the no, union sir, didn't sir, help sir, them. Sir, 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 not only are you wrong about your other premise, but the company is in reorganization. Well, reorganization. They're calling it bankruptcy. They're calling it Chapter 11. That's what they're calling it. Well, it is Chapter 11, sir. It's bankruptcy of the is bankruptcy. Chapter That's exactly chapter right. 11 chapter 11, 11 of the bankru- Federal Bankruptcy Act. Right, sir, which is reorganization. And exactly. Well, that's what I said. You said it, and I said Thank you both- ever so much for your call, sir. It was a stimulating call. 
Uh, Don Richards standing by at the WFLA news desk. The vote, as expected, was no on the nomination of John... after the hour of 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll probably, in its entirety tomorrow, do the uh, Mad Dog rap. Just uh, just kind of got it in the studio this afternoon. Unbelievable. Newport Richie, hi, New. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Sounds pretty good, Bob. Oh, it's dynamite. Wait till you hear it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Goes on for four minutes. Hey, before we get on the subject of unions, I want to say one thing. You're sure in a damn good, good position right now to negotiate a contract. You know what? The way I got it figured out, they pay a thousand bucks a day. That's three hundred and sixty-five thousand a year. I'd settle for that if I was you. Well, sir, sir, you must you must understand. Uh, uh, it might appear as though I was in an excellent position, but you must understand that that much of management yesterday, sir, was literally out looking for cow chips, and I'm yeah. not kidding. Mm -hmm. Yep. I that, heard that, that. That does not uh, bode well for the negotiations. Bob, we don't like to throw stones, but didn't they have the radio on yesterday during that time slot? Uh, sir, all, all I can tell you is, you know, throwing stones, throwing cow chips, I'm not sure what it is. Mm -hmm. That's where much of management was. So, you know, you so just take it from there. I see. Well, I can understand that. Well, anyways, after listening to yesterday, I don't know what they've got to pay you, but it should be any amount just to keep this thing going. I'm looking, sir, for 47 cents a call. I hope so. Bob, one thing I wanted to mention uh, about the unions, that, and it really bugs me, and I see it every day, you know, and uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's these people that have worked in unions all their life that come down from up north, build a new home, $150,000, $200,000 home. They've got a tremendous pension. The first damn thing they do, and believe me, it's not all of them, but it's most of them, and a lot of your callers should do a little bit of... I, I don't know how many of them are coming down, you know, laborers building $150,000 homes. So. Well, uh, there's a lot of them, Bob. Um, believe me, I'm in the business, four, and there's five, a lot of them. Believe me, yeah, you, you don't realize the kind of money that they've made and saved up there throughout the years. But the, the main the main reason they've done it, Bob, is because of the fact when they bought their home back in Detroit or New York, they probably paid fifteen thousand dollars for it thirty years ago. When they sold it, they just sold it for two hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, whatever. And they want to reinvest the money so they don't have to pay taxes on it. But that's neither here nor there. The point that I'm trying to make. Well, no, you know, yeah, yes, you know, you, you got to do it both sides. I don't think there are a hell of a lot of people selling their homes for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in Detroit today. Mm, well, you know, I, I, I'm not really trying to be an antagonist. Right. But damn it, if I'm going to jump on the other guys for making it up as they're going along, I got to jump on you too. That's true. But, but believe me, Bob, in my business, I see it, and, and it does happen. I see it all the time. And in fact, uh, probably a lot of people listening in right now uh, who have just moved down from New York or Detroit will tell you that, what, what they've made off their house. But that's not the point. The point that I'm trying to make is, is they work union all their life. The first damn thing they do is they come down here, get rid of their cars, thinking they're going to cut their overhead, and they go out and buy a foreign car. And I see it every day, Bob. I see it in my own neighborhood. And I see it with the, with the, the people I deal with. Well, sir, it wasn't that long ago where the you know, American automobile manufacturers had to literally post signs asking people for foreign cars not to park in their parking lot. Right. Now, you remember for a while there, we were watching Ali North all the time driving around. I think it was, what, a Subaru station wagon or something? Well, that whole crowd, the entire, it, it seemed as though everybody in the Nixon administration, Nixon, in the Reagan administration was driving a foreign car. Well, yesterday I saw, <laughs> anyways, it showed uh, the cameraman outside Lorenzo's house trying to get an uh, interview with him on his way to work. Mm-hmm. He was driving a Volkswagen convertible. Now, that wasn't bad enough. Then, CNN switched to uh, Mike Dukakis picking Kitty up at the uh, hospital. He's driving a BMW. No, I beg your pardon, sir. That was a Chrysler Corporation car. That BMW? That wasn't a BMW. That was a Chrysler Corporation car. Oh, well, the black one? You, evidently, you didn't see the same one I seen. Well, if he was driving a BMW, to hell with him. Oh, well, whatever. You no, know, literally. I, I'm, I'm sorry if he was driving a BMW, but what I, uh, what I saw mm -hmm. looked to me like a Chrysler Corporate, one of those K cars, I oh, thought. Oh, okay. Well, well, maybe you saw a different one. But regardless, uh, the point that I'm trying to make is the fact that, that a lot of these union people that have come down here, uh, I think have lost complete... Uh, I, I don't know what it is, whether they don't have sympathy for the, for the union people anymore or, or whether they've just forgot their own position in life 
or what it is. Or, uh, it, it just seems to me that uh, that they aren't offering the type of support that they, they should. Well, okay, on that point, I've got to go. Standing by is my old buddy, Gary McHenry. <laughs> Ladies, it will be safe to go to the Grand Prix Car Wash tomorrow. We have... We have somehow, I can't really tell you how we've done this, but we have gotten McHenry out of town for the weekend. So it will be safe to go to the Grand Prix car wash. We are aware of the fact that Gary has been cruising the Grand Prix during the weekends looking for chicks. And that a lot of chicks have been complaining about it. And a lot of guys have been complaining about it because they've asked their, you know, their ladies to go down and get the car wash. And there's McHenry saying, hey, hey, you want to go out? Hey, you'll have a good time. Well, we got him out of town, so it will be safe to take your car there. You can... You can, of course, while you're there, either get the first class finish, which is the the good, all-around basic car wash and waxing. Or, of course, you can get the super wash. It's on sale, or on special, I should say, this week. Get a super wash. Next time you come in, you'll get 25% off on your super wash, and they will armor all your tires both times. And, of course, there is the Supreme, my favorite, all at the Grand Prix car wash. And the best news is McHenry will not be cruising around the Grand Prix this weekend. So, you can either go to the Grand Prix in Clearwater at 1880 Gulf to Bay Boulevard. It's right across the street from the Clearwater High School. Or to the Seminole Grand Prix Car Wash. They're located at 10471 Park Boulevard. Or the Grand Prix Car Wash to the Stars. 3622 Gandhi Boulevard in South Tampa. Tell them, of course, uh, if you would, that, that I sent you. I'd appreciate it. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. Uh, never called in before. Uh, listen to your show. Hope I don't. Uh, hope I don't make a fool of myself. But I, I'm an AMP, licensed AMP. Uh, used to work for Eastern for just a little bit, and then the uh, when the air traffic controllers got fired. What, what is the like licensed AMP? It's a term I'm not familiar with. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. Uh, it's uh, aircraft mechanic, uh, airframe and power plant. Two different certifications. Okay. So I keep my licenses current and everything. But, you know all of the the stuff we got to go through to get the licenses. You know and. People don't. The, the guys that keep calling in and they don't sympathize with these uh, with these uh, machinists that are on strike. I mean, first off, the, you know, you've got a lot of tension on, uh, on the job. You're responsible. You know, air, aircraft are so. Nine seventy WFLA. Bob. Yeah. Yay! First time caller. Fantastic. Hey, buddy. Uh, I just want to say a couple things. One thing: your uh, Christmas show. Yeah. That you did fabulous. Fabulous. I haven't had a chance to talk to you, but that. That really touched the heart. Uh, back to the union thing and everything. I think this just goes back to just another chapter in the selling of America. 